Well, hello, it's Paul here from Trek It with Harry as usual flying the camera and uh, trying to make me stick to the script. And today we are out in the uh, rather bucolic and autumnal Y Valley. It's a uh, slightly damp, miserable, grey, chilly day. The kind of perfect day to talk to you about synthetic insulation. We're going to give you an insight into the three main types of synthetic insulation that are available in uh, jackets predominantly but also in other items of clothing uh, but what we're not going to do is we're not going to do that age-old is synthetic better than down we've done that already Hannah did a really good video on that and Harry will put a link to that video so if you want to know which is better for you synthetic or down you can watch that video but this one really is about the three different types of synthetic insulation that are available in the market today. We aim to give you some insight, give you some advice, give you some information, just to make it easier to, for you to choose the right product for your intended activity. So the three different types that are available, you get sheet insulation, blown insulation, and active insulation or breathable insulation, depends breathable or active, active, breathable, whatever. So sheet, blown, active or breathable insulation. And then they all aim to do exactly the same thing and that's to trap some air within the garment to keep you warm when you're out and about in the mountains. But they all work in slightly different ways. So that's what we're gonna go through in the video. We're just gonna explain those three different types. And uh, yeah, so uh, let's crack on with the details, Harry. Right, let's start with sheet insulation. Sheet insulation, as the name implies, is uh, some man-made fibres, synthetic fibres, predominantly polyester, that are engineered into a sheet, or like wadding, or sometimes they're called a bat, B-A-T-T, -T, of insulation. So it's like a kind of spongy kind of carpet, kind of underlay type stuff that's made up of these fibres that trap air uh, and the, the insulation itself is quite stable because it has kind of like backing material either side of it. So you can imagine all these little fluffy fibres in the middle here and then you've got these sort of wadding type material on the outside to keep it very stable. So it's a very strong, very stable insulation. And it's also the kind of the original synthetic insulation. Uh, the very first jackets that were created uh, to... Um, to combat the problems with down, as in with wetness and things like that, uh, used sheet insulation. So this is the uh, this is the Montane prism, and this uses sheet insulation. So you've got underneath this grey fabric here, you've got that wadding, that batting, if you like, of sheet insulation between the inner and the outer fabric, acting to trap that warm air that you're creating and to protect you from the elements. Now the warmth of the jacket is normally determined by the amount of the insulation that you get inside uh, and for sheet insulation that is normally measured in grams per square meter so that's literally the, the, the weight of the amount of the wadding that's inside the jacket. Uh, so inside this prism jacket it's quite a light to mid-weight jacket it's got about 40 grams per square meter of insulation inside uh, but if you were looking at like heavier weight expedition or belay jackets you might go up to 150 or even 200 grams per square meter. And that will give you an exceptionally warm jacket for more static activities. So the lighter the filling, obviously the less insulation you've got, so they're more suited for more active pursuits. The heavier the filling, the warmer the jacket will be, but obviously it will be less breathable, it'll be bulkier, it'll be heavier, but suitable for static activities such as belaying or over insulation for where you stop when you're hiking. So why use sheet insulation in the first place? Uh, well, because of its structure, it's very stable, it's very strong, it resists compression from uh, rucksack straps, from uh, um, climbing harnesses, and because of the way that it's engineered in that kind of continuous mat, it's got high weather resistance, so water literally just can't get through it. And the fact that the fabric the, the insulation itself is pretty much hydrophobic. It doesn't absorb moisture. It'll keep you warm even if it gets wet. 
unlike natural or down. So that's the big advantage of synthetic fillings. It will keep you warm even with wet. And with, with the sheet insulation, because of that engineered structure, it is very, very weather resistant. So you tend to find this in jackets that are gonna be used day in, day out in all kinds of conditions. They're pretty much the workhorse of the synthetic insulated jacket world. They're tough, they're reliable. <coughs> That's Nelly barking at a horse. They resist compression, but they will pack down small. So it doesn't matter if they're, if they're packed up in a bag, they'll bounce back up afterwards. Uh, and they're highly weather resistant and tough. So just to repeat, if you're looking for a durable, weather resistant, versatile jacket that you're gonna use day in, day out, and give it a pretty hard time, sheet insulated jackets would be your preferred choice. I suppose the only disadvantage of sheet insulation is that it is a bit bulkier and it is a bit heavier. This jacket, for instance, weighs around 400 grams uh, and an equivalent in a blown jacket, blown insulation jacket, something with equivalent warmth would be um, you know, quite significantly lighter. But like I said, tough, durable, a real workhorse. I've had a prism jacket for, for many years, still going strong. Uh, it's just really good, reliable, versatile type of insulation. Let's talk about blown insulation. So for that, I'm gonna to have to change jackets. This is a um, Montane Prism. And for the blown insulation, we're gonna have a look at the Hagloff's Mimic jacket. So Harry, check it over. So this is a great example of a blown insulated synthetic jacket. It's the Hagloff's Lim Mimic jacket. Clues in the name, it's, it's uh, Mimic. It's trying to mimic natural down. So natural down uses little fine clusters of down, little feathery, fine, soft filaments that trap the air. And it's exactly what Hagloffs are trying to do with their filling that they've used in this jacket. So it's, uh, it's little clusters of, again, polyester fibres. A lot of these companies are using rec recycled fibres as well now. So polyester fibres that are kind of twisted up and bobbled up and into like little clusters that mimic, get it, mimic the properties of natural down, but you do get all the advantages of synthetic material in that. Uh, it's easier to care for, it's easier to wash and clean and dry, for instance. It is much less um, susceptible to losing its insulation when it gets wet. So you could literally drop this in a river, wring it out, put it back on, and it would still keep you warm. you just impossible with a down jacket, it just wouldn't work. You'd have to dry it fully before it was capable of keeping you warm. And the big advantage is, again, of the blown insulation, is that the jackets feel lighter, they feel softer, they feel much more like a natural down jacket. And to trap all that insulation inside, the jacket has to have baffles. So these are like little tubes in here, exactly the same as a down jacket, where the insulation is blown, hence the name blown insulation, into these tubes, and that creates these little pockets of warm air all over the jacket. And because the uh, filaments are in these tiny little twisted up little bundles, these little clusters, these little down mimics. The jacket is far more compressible than a sheet insulation, than the Montane Prism we were looking at earlier. Because the filling is smaller, it's lighter, it's not been engineered into that sheet, it's little individual little clusters, you can pack it down a lot smaller and it bounces back to life once you take it out of the stuff sack. So for those looking for a really lightweight, compressible, breathable jacket, blown insulation is a great choice. It also looks like a down jacket. I mean, unless you knew, you want to look at this and you think that's a down jacket. So if for you, that kind of baffled look, that aesthetic is important and you want it to look like a down jacket, but you don't want the disadvantages of down, blown insulation is a great choice. But I suppose the big disadvantage is the fact that in the creation of all these baffles, there's lots of stitching, lots and lots of stitching. So you notice compared with the prism, it was a fairly flat front, very minimal stitching. 
Uh, stitching equals water ingress points, basically. Where there is stitching, water will get into the jacket. So it's much less weather resistant than sheet insulation, but it is more breathable. And it's also slightly less windproof as well because of the stitching. Again, it's a stitch point, it's created little holes, air will get through the jacket. So slightly less windproof, but again, more breathable because of that, just because of that stitching. So it's softer, it's lighter, it's more breathable than sheet insulation, but it is less weather resistant and slightly less durable. Because blown insulation really does kind of tr really just try and copy down to give you an indication of the warmth of the jacket rather than using grams per square meter that they do in sheet insulation and active insulation they use a, a, a weight measurement of the total fill so you know with a down jacket you'll get say 250 grams of 700 fill power down it's much the same with synthetic insulation except you don't get the fill power element There's, there is no fill power element for synthetic blown insulation but to give you an indication of the warmth of the jackets, there's an overall fill weight. So something that like this, which is a, a kind of a light midweight jacket, this is about 120 grams of synthetic insulation fill. And that'll go up to 200, 250 grams for something that's bigger and bulkier, designed for more static activities. So just look out for those numbers. The lower the number, the lower the warmth. The higher the number, the higher the warmth. You got it. Right, let's move on to uh, the third type of synthetic insulation, which is uh, active or breathable. Some manufacturers call it active, some manufacturers call it breathable. Uh, but yeah, Harry, chuck me over a jacket and I'll whip it on. <laughs> right, so this is, uh, this is a brand new piece for this winter. This is the Rab Zen Air jacket. And we've been particularly impressed with this just because it's lovely. And we think Rab have done a really good job. Uh, but it's using uh, the breathable or active insulation. So these jackets are designed for active pursuits, those kind of stop-start pursuits where you're getting warm and then you're stopping and you're cooling off and then you're moving and you might be doing a bit of climbing, a bit of scrambling, somewhere where you're generating quite a bit of warmth. So you don't need a huge amount of insulation, but you do need protection from the elements and you do need masses of breathability. So they're designed to be put on and to stay on for stop start, more active pursuits. And the insulation itself has a very open structure. That's why it's breathable. And I think the best way I can think to describe its construction is kind of like a really fluffy string vest. So you've got the, the fluffy bits so all those little fine filaments trapping the air, trapping the warm air that you're creating by your body. You've got the holes kind of in between all the fluffy bits in the string vest. Bear with me, just get that mental image in your head. A big, really fluffy string vest. So you've got the holes so the air can pass through really easily. And then you've got the string bit. This is very basic, but you've got the string bit which provides the structure. So you'll notice there's no baffles on this jacket. It's got very minimal stitching. That's because the insulation is very stable. It's not all gonna slump down to the bottom of the jacket. It stays in place with minimal stitching. Super breathable and provides a kind of a, a light to mid insulation. And it is exceptionally comfortable to wear. And because the um, manufacturers have got this stable insulation, they can use much lighter much more breathable fabrics on the outside because they're not having to worry about fibres escaping or creating stability for the insulation or to creating baffles. <laughs> so um, Nelly agrees. So you often find these jackets have lightweight, often stretchy fabrics. The choice of fabric for the uh, manufacturer is pretty much endless. They can use whatever they like, but invariably they're using really, really lightweight face fabrics that are air permeable, so they're breathable. Shut up, Nell. You can use, you can almost feel a little bit of air moving through the jacket. So they're super breathable uh, for active use, hence the term breathable or active insulation. You'll find different weights 
again with uh, with this type of insulation uh, and much like sheet insulation it relies on that uh, grams per square meter measurement so uh, something like this is about 60 grams per square meter you go to 80 100 150 but because they're intended for active use you tend to find these in the light to midweight category of jackets they're not the ideal jacket for kind of everyday knocking about town use because you get that air permeability so if you're stood still you'll feel a little bit of air moving through the jacket they are primarily designed for active users who need that maximum breathability and a little bit of insulation just to keep them warm in cool conditions they also work superbly as a mid layer because of that breathability uh, so if you were slinging this over you know for winter hiking winter mountaineering underneath a hard shell jacket works absolutely superbly so look out for active insulation for stop start high output more active pursuits uh, or if something if you want to use it as a mid layer okay so throughout this video i've been talking about compressibility packability etc so i thought to try and give you some kind of you know real world example i have uh, uh, the ubiquitous xbed ultralight fold dry bag this is a size small and what i'm going to do is i'm going to stuff each jacket into the small stuff sack just so I can give you an idea of a how easy it is to do and b what the end result is like to show the differences in pack size uh, so yeah here goes so this is the montane prism this is the sheet insulation jacket and uh, it, you know like i said it compresses down pretty easily it's going into the stuff sack and i really ram that down and i can get the top rolled over three four times quite nicely get the air out and that packs down to that size Right here we got the uh, Hagloff's Limb Mimic. This is the blown insulation. So this is softer, lighter and a bit squishier. And uh, as I'm packing it in straight away, I can notice that this is significantly easier to squash in. I can really squash this down and let's get the air out. I can roll this further down than I could with the sheet insulation and I've ended up with a significantly smaller pack size. That will go smaller, but um, that is a good 40%, I'd say, at a guess, 30, 40% smaller than the sheet insulation. Right, here we have the Rab Zen Air jacket. This is the uh, active or breathable insulation. And let's see how well this goes in. So straight away, it kind of feels similar to the sheet insulation, it just feels a little bit bulkier, a little bit harder to compress than the blown insulation. And I can roll that over a few times, but it definitely feels a bit bulkier. I'd say that is about the same as sheet insulation. Now let's not get that wrong. Any of these jackets pack up small. That's not, that's not a big pack size by anybody's stretch of the imagination. It just demonstrates that the blown insulation, if you're looking for that minimal pack size, that lightness and that softness, that is definitely the jacket that packs down the smallest or the type of insulation that packs down the smallest. So any of these jackets will keep you warm and it really depends on your chosen activity as to which one is going to suit you best. If, you, if you're in doubt at all, just give us a ring, come and talk to us, get on live chat on the website and, uh, and pick our brains. That's what we're here for. All of the jackets that I've worn in this video, we've done uh, inside look videos for. So if you want to get the full information on each of the jackets specifically, Harry will put links up in the video here so you can follow those through and really just fill your boots and get all the details of the jackets. And all that leaves me to say is thanks very much for watching. It's been a pleasure as usual. And if you have any comments or questions, stick them in the section below. It's always good to hear from you, even if some of them are, yeah, questionable. I think we'll say, Harry, shall we? He's nodding. Yeah, but anyway, they make us laugh. And, and don't forget to subscribe if you like our content, if you like these videos, you want to keep up to date with all that we're doing here and all of the latest product and information. Please subscribe and hit the little bell icon 
so you get a notification every time a new video is posted. So uh, yeah, I will uh, might even take the dogs for a little walk, go wander around the woods in this beautiful autumnal splendour. Thanks for watching. Toodaloo.